Hello and welcome back to the channel or welcome if you're new. March has been an absolute washout here in Ireland. It hasn't been like a couple of years ago where we had a beautiful, we pretty much had a false summer in March. This year it has been very wet. I think we had like the highest rainfall on record for March this year. We had a couple of mild days and now it's gone back a bit chilly, which has made me lack all motivation to be getting outside into the garden. However, I was starting to feel, you know when you pull up into the driveway and you get out and I could see how messy the garden was and the days are getting a bit longer. And in fact, I think I was starting to feel ashamed of how bad the garden was looking, especially in the front. So I had some jobs that I needed to tackle. So join me, pop the kettle, make a cup of tea and let's get started with the gardening jobs. Okay, we are in the front garden where there is lots of dried up leaves that need to be bagged up. The pots are kind of just thrown around. There's no rhyme or reason to them. The grass is starting to grow and you'll see later on that I'm gonna attempt to sow a mini meadow. And I think the front garden I am most ashamed about because like I go on television talking about garden things and I am embarrassed to be like, oh, here's my garden that looks in an absolute shambles. However, I think everyone has these corners in their gardens and it's never going to be perfect all of the time. And I have been lacking the motivation to go out and clean it. So I decided, no, I'm just going to go out with the brush and I'm just going to take it section by section. I don't have to get everything done in a day. And that's what I did. Also, my garden, because of the position of it on the road, whenever there is really bad winds, especially on recycling day, I end up with lots of rubbish in my garden. Now, it's not loads, but it's something that I have to go around and do a little bit of litter picking. So it's just because of where my house is situated and the wind and the combination of wheelie bin day. So I do have to pick up the rubbish as well. Also, if you saw, I think it was back in January or February, I got myself a new lawnmower and I've gone electric. Now, just to give you a little bit of feedback, I'm not a lawnmower reviewer, um, but straight off the bat, it's not as powerful and as good as my old petrol lawnmower, but I wanted to switch to electric. Um, but it's not as powerful and also you would 100% need to have a second battery. The reason why I went for the Ryobi one is because I already have some of their batteries from tools. So I think that's how tool companies get you into their kind of cults almost. No, I, I don't think it's fair to call them a cult. But because they all have the same battery for the same tool, I find myself buying their tools because I have multiple batteries. So the batteries work in the lawnmower, but if you were to just go out and buy this, you would just get one battery and it does take a little bit to charge. It's an 18 volt one. So I would recommend getting a second battery if you want to go electric. If you have a large garden, I don't recommend this lawnmower. I think you would have to spend to get like the more expensive model. Um, so yeah, I'm on the fence. Uh, one of the pluses is there isn't the smell of petrol and I don't have to refill it. Um, but it's still quite noisy. It's not as noisy as the petrol, but it is still noisy. So there's my review so far.
the job I have needed to do for the longest time is replace the rotten edging that has been here. So the wood that's here is probably about 10 years old, nine, 10 years old. And most wooden edging will last kind of that time. It might not even last as long. So I can't remember where the scalloped edging was originally from. I think it was either B&Q or Woody's um, or one of those places. And it wasn't that expensive and it was starting to literally crumble in my hands. So those sleepers that you can see there, I bought them last year for a project because I wanted to do raised beds in the front and I just hadn't got the energy to execute that project. So I've decided to use those sleepers to replace the edging that I'm taking up. So at the moment I'm just removing the edging and I'm just placing in the sleepers but I do have to go back in and I have to get one of my brothers just to help me to secure them in. So I think we're going to nail in some spikes so that they go properly into the ground. So as you can see them now they're just resting pretty much into the soil in the area where I took up the old piece of edging. It is a paint you can get that preserves wood when it's being used in the garden. I think it might be called a bitumen paint it's a black paint and I know that my neighbor um, many many years ago when our fence blew away we built our own and they put a black paint onto the end of the post before it was cemented in and I think it is to help it last longer I think it might be called bitumen paint. If you don't want to replace the edging of a border in your garden every couple of years, every 10 years or so, metal edging is probably your safest bet. It can get a nice patina on it as well. I know it's quite popular with a lot of, you know, garden landscapers for using it as edging as it's just, it lasts longer basically. But I do love a bit of wood in the garden and I like the kind of chunky look of these sleepers. I feel like it makes it look a bit more cottagey and like less modern. I still would like to do the project in the front patch of grass where you'll see where I'm putting the meadow where I wanted to do raised beds around the wall but I think I would go to a salvage yard or get more sleep sleepers that had more detail in them. The ones that I'm using here are just from b and I think they're about 20 quid a sleeper so I think if I was to do the project that I wanted to do I think I would maybe put some money aside and try and get ones that were a bit more rustic and cottage looking. Um, I know these sleepers that are here will wear over time you can also bash them with a few chains and a hammer to make them look more aged and then you could put like a wood stain on them as well but yeah I still would like to do the project in the front but definitely I'm not gonna try and do it by myself I'm gonna ask for help with that one because I think that's why my bit of soil and sleepers have been sitting in the garden for months it was because I think I underestimated how big of a task it was just for myself as long alongside all my other things that I do so I think it's something I still wanted to do but I'm gonna ask for help Hello, I hope you can see me. Um, first of all, what is that in the sky? It is sunshine. Now, I have a scandalous confession for you, and I hope my mic is gonna pick up without the wind. Apologies in advance. This is a composter. I, my regular viewers will know, I don't have a dedicated compost area, and it's a big mistake that I kind of made 
when I was like planning things in the garden. I didn't plan for compost and water butts. So I have gotten a hot bin. So I'm going to open up, but actually I want to reuse the cardboard from the box to do the no dig mini meadow. So two little jobs for us. So I'm after getting, I need to take the plastic off. So I got this probably a month ago but time has just been running away from me. So it's been sitting outside. You can see the cardboard is starting to combust. Combust, compost. So in here is a hot bin. In one. When I was at a garden festival last year. Hang on. Oh, okay, so this is the plinth that it sits on. And in here is the bin. What I love about this is it's lovely and light. Well, until I fill it. Open, close. Oh. Now, Karen has also gotten one of these. I have the smaller one. I think this is 100 litre. She got the bigger one because she has a bigger garden. I think I'm going to put this over here near the bins or I could put it down the back. The problem is if I put it down the back, it's grand now, but in winter time, I'm less likely to walk down the back with my compost stuff because I have my other bin here. So I need to kind of think long term. Oh, there's stuff inside as well. Okay, I need to read the user guide. Aeration mesh, hop in user guide. Okay. Also, I got this hop in from the same company that I get like my mulch um, and on my raised beds. So I got this from Quick Crop and they do the 100 litre and the 200 litre one. I think Karen on her last garden video, she was sharing hers. She got the 200 litre one. So if you want to see what that one looks like, head on over. I feel like I need to read up on the hop in though. Right, I'm gonna put these in. Oh, reuse this cardboard to make a no dig mini meadow, I hope. Okay, operation no dig mini meadow on the windiest day in March. So if you were to get a bag of wildflower seeds and just sprinkle them on the grass, the likelihood of them taking is quite low because the grass competes with your wildflower seeds and can kind of just take over the space. So I know if you have like a big field, they will rotivate the ground and then you can sprinkle in the seeds and then you will have a lovely wildflower. But I'm experimenting and I wanna just make a patch, but I don't want to dig up all the turf. I want this to be as easy as I can. And also this is a bit of an experiment. So if you wanna wait a couple of weeks and see how I got on, do I don't know if this is going to work if it doesn't work I will just I don't know cover it in grass seed but I think it's going to work so I'm putting down cardboard because cardboard will kill the grass that's underneath because it blocks the light and that takes a couple of weeks to happen so I'm hoping because the weather I have been trying to germinate cosmo seeds on the window the weather has been too crap they are not having any bar of germination. So I'm hoping in the next month, it will be mid to late April, I can then sow the seeds so that the grass underneath and the cardboard will mostly have been decomposed, it will compost down. I'll remove any weeds that may have gone into the topsoil that I have here. And I will sow the native Irish wildflower seeds. Now I bought a packet of them last year. I don't think seeds go off if you store them correctly. Um, I had them in the greenhouse, which can be cold over winter. So I'm hoping that kind of just preserve them. I don't know. So I'm gonna sprinkle some native Irish wildflower seeds onto it and hopefully I have a patch of wildflower seeds in the front. And in the front, this patch of grass is full of clover, buttercups, dandelions. So a lot of people do no mow May. I leave this section till probably August or September. But what I will do is I normally just cut like a border around it with the lawnmower so it looks like I'm purposely letting it grow a bit wild. So yeah, there's lots of clover and, and there's daisies and yeah, this grass kind of comes alive. 
but I wanted to do a wildflower patch in the middle along with the other stuff that grows in the grass just to see, just to see, have a little experiment. friendly paint um, I did google bee friendly paint I think you can just use a low VOC paint because this was like an untreated uh, softwood I think yeah softwood and she espanol Spanish but I got it from Dingle beekeepers and it is in the shade vert olive and it feels kind of like the fence paint it's not as thick as satinwood um, but it's not as watery as some fence paints. I think it's just super low in VOCs because uh, I do want to paint <laughs> some flowers or something on the front but I need to check the book because I remember one of the lectures the guy was saying that you need to have a different colour on the front so if you have a load of green hives each hive would have to have a unique marking, I think. I have to look this up now, I'm not the expert. So that that bee knows that that's its hive. Obviously they know from other things like scent and stuff. So I need to just read the book and see what is it that they need. So basically if I had four hives that were all the same, I would have to have some sort of different color, whether it's like a stripe of paint here, or some sort of unique marking so that they would know which hive was theirs and they wouldn't get confused. I think. I will check the book. But I wanted to, I got little tester pots of fence paint because they were like two for a fiver. And I was going to just paint on some flowers. But I'll wait until this dries. Now another thing, let me just pull this down. So this is the base, this is the bottom, it's the anti varroa base. So there's like a grill here and then there's a, a baseboard that pulls out. Then this is a brood box, which I'm very proud of myself because if you had asked me 10 weeks ago, what's a brood box? What's a super box? What's a queen excluder and a crown board? Is that what it's called? Yeah. Um, I would have not known what it was. So what I have here is, this is the roof. This is a brood box and I have brood frames to put together. I have brood frames to stick together. Or I did have brood frames to stick together. So there is loads of tutorials on YouTube on how to stick the frames together. And I do have frame comb for the brood. Yes, I'll put that there. Brood frames. So I need to get a super for the top because the brood box is, so when I get a nuke or a nook, I think it's a nuke, 
of these around about May time, maybe June, uh, they'll go into the brood box, I imagine, the brood section with the queen. And then the like foragey bees will fly off, they'll be coming back with loads of nectar and stuff. So they'll need somewhere to store it, which you put a super box on, and then the bees fly up to the super box. I don't think they put honey in the brood box. Any honey in the brood box is for to feed the baby bees. I'm making this sound really, really simple. I vaguely know what I've done, but thankfully I'm supervised. Um, so yeah, you put the super box on, and that's how you see hives that have loads of like height to them so they could have like two or three super boxes on them depending on the volume of bees that are in it because what can happen is if the bees don't have enough room in the super box they could swarm um and then you stick another um super box super on top and they will store more honey and yeah you're just giving the bees more space so that's why you see, if you see a row of hives and maybe one of them is taller than the other, it's because they've put on another super box. So that's what it's called. So I need to order super boxes and hive tools. I got this hive secondhand. Um, well, as you can see, it was brand new, but someone in the group was selling it. Um, they got it as a present and they didn't do anything with it. So they decided to sell it on. So I had the receipt there. So um, I put together everything except the frames and I have the queen excluder and the hive uh, crown board. The queen excluder is so that the queen can't come out of the brood box because what can happen is if the queen gets into the super, she'll start laying eggs in the frames in the super, which you want to keep just for all of the nectar and everything that they bring back. So the queen stays in the brood box. And then that's why you have a queen excluder, but it's big enough, I'll show you. The queen excluder is big enough for all of the other bees to get in, just the queen won't go in that box. So yeah, queen has a tough job. I don't envy the queen. She goes around laying eggs 24, well, not 24, 7, but pretty much. She just lays eggs and if she stops doing her job, the bees just kill her. Um, and they just lay new, they, uh, they start making queen cells and they'll make new queens if they're not kind of happy with the old one. <laughs> I'm like, ruthless. Bees are quite ruthless. Um, they're so fascinating. If I highly recommend watching any documentaries, whether it's on YouTube or um, on any of the streaming things because they are really, really interesting, highly intelligent. I think they're known as a super organism, I think. Did I make that up? So that's my hive. I'll let you know if I paint. I just tossed some flowers on the side. It would look lovely. Um, it also disguises it a little. Another thing you have to be careful of if you have bees, depending on where they are, is, and I didn't think of this. So naturally people might be curious because I remember when I was in France last year, there was bees in the field. And obviously I was really curious and wanted to have, like obviously not a look in the hive, but get close. Um, so when you do get bees, you have to make sure they're not in an obvious kind of location or place. So I feel like this colour um, kind of blends in a bit more. Um, I see lovely like flow hives online and I imagine if they were somewhere, people would be curious and want to have a look and get really close to them. But that can be dangerous and obviously it interferes and annoys the bees as well. Um, we don't want to annoy them. Um, I also got my, I also got a bee suit <laughs> and I joined the association so I'm hoping to go to their apiary in April sometime um, for hands-on kind of here's the look inside a beehive, can you handle it? Um, and yeah I don't want to buy too much in case something happens and I don't know but at the end of the day I'm like I can always just pass on the hive like I can just sell it on to someone um yeah if I don't end up being a good beekeeper but yeah I suppose you have to just take the risk don't you anyway there we are I'm gonna end it there because I think we got a lot of jobs done I still feel a bit behind but I just have to keep reminding myself like it's it's only March it's still only March
and yeah. Who's to, I'm getting excited for, it was, it was sunny today and it was really nice and I was like, yeah, I can't wait for spring, summer, sunny days in the garden. I can feel my soul starting to become alive once again now that spring is properly here. Anyway, I'll see you in the next one. If you're new to gardening or if you're new to my channel, I promise I have much prettier garden videos over on the Cottage Garden playlist. I also have a video that I put together back in January just sharing my journey. So if you want to see some of my DIY projects that I've done in the garden, I'll pop a card and I will link to that video in the description as well where you can check it out and there's also loads more videos so if you want to see what i got up to in the garden last season check out the cottage garden playlist and you can watch them in order or if you would like to binge videos ad free why not become a member and you can watch all of the channel's videos on the member playlist ad free